Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Code. Thanks for joining me today. Today I thought I would show you how I make these uh, cute little greeting cards. They're a little different. So how I came about the idea was I was looking at our scrappy uh, roll that we made together a couple of videos back um, of taking scraps uh, gluing them to a single piece of paper making like a long strip and then decorating them with sketches or watercolor I uh, don't know if I have any of the watercolor one left I've been using it here's one with some watercolor in it um, so I showed a video how to make these and then sew them and then I they were sitting on my desk the other day and I thought how can I use some of these and I knew that I had to make a birthday card for a friend well, I wanted to, didn't have to, but I wanted to. And I thought, let's use these on a card. So I didn't want to make a traditional card. Um, made enough of those in my lifetime. I So I thought of something a little different, which is these upright cards. Now they're hard to show how they work um, because my camera's mounted above, uh, but you would see them in the thumbnail, how they kind of sit up and sit on a desk like that. So the message, uh, when they pull them out of the envelope is is present it's like a it's like a card but it doesn't open so you'd sign the back here and write the well wishes and things like that and they're a great way to use up scraps and these fun rolls that we created and then I made an envelope because they're going to be all unique sizes so I have to create an envelope for them to fit in and that's how I would mail it so I thought it was something different something fun again using up scraps so in order to make these very rigid, I use the back end of watercolor books. Um, I have some Carson board, artist board scraps here. So I'll use those and uh, I'll show you how I make them. They're really fun and easy and you can mass produce these and you can put whatever message you want on there. I, so I have a happy Mother's Day, a thinking of you and her happy birthday one. Uh, she loves flowers. So I use that part of the rule. And I'll write the message on the back and, and send it out. Just something very different, very artistic and unique to send someone. So let's let's make some of these, shall we? So um, I'm going to use some of these boards. And I think I've got some cut down already. So we'll use this one. So I usually make them about three inches wide, I think is a nice size. And about six inches long. But whatever scraps you have. And I went to the home what is it called the staples and uh, because I don't have a computer or printer and I just wrote out a bunch of different messages in different fonts and printed those so they're they're ready to use now maybe you have stamps a happy birthday stamps or any of that stuff um, I don't have any of that so I have to print some out but um, yeah you can use anything anything in your repertoire so I'm basically just going to collage here and I'm going to just cover the paper. When I, even though this is a nice clean white surface, I could probably use it, you know, this, this part of the card, but I want to cover the edges. So I'm going to stick this guy down. Oh, I stuck the wrong, I glued the wrong side. It doesn't really matter, does it? Because it's getting wrapped. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking. It's still early in the morning here. It's my day off and I'm trying to um, get a video filmed while I have some time off. And uh, my brain is still waking up. <laughs> so I just cut the edges and I have fun with my scraps. So just use up whatever that's glued. And I try to get close to the edge without snipping the edge so that it covers it as best I can. And then I'll put these in my scrap pile. And I will continue gluing. So I hope you're all having fun with your papers or whatever it is you're into, your watercolors, your painting, taking some time to be creative for yourself because uh, there's nothing more fun than creating. So I don't know if this is an original idea or not, probably not, but that's how I came about these cards. I kind of like them. There's something a little different about them. And you can take it in any direction you want with whatever materials you might have. So I want to clean up these edges a little bit. 
So I'm just going to put some scraps on there. And my ruler. They're not really going to show anyways, but I don't want the edges. I want it a little more polished than uh, the way I just cut it. And this could be the back of the card anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But if it's going to be a gift, it's going to be a card in the mail, you want to make that little extra effort of making it look polished and finished. So I'll do one on this side, just in the corner here where I missed. And you can build this to any theme. So if you're sending a card, for example, you can theme it to whatever your friend likes. You know, if they're into steampunk or flowers or locomotives, <laughs> whatever it is. And then maybe just one more piece on the back here just to polish it right off. And I just have fun collaging away. Coming up with something. So again, I'll probably just use this as the back. We'll see and turn it around and see what we got in the front. So it's not even really going to be seen this part. But something fun like this in the mail. Something these would I think sell quite well in a craft craft venue as well because they're so unique, you know? A unique card. So there's the front. So now I'm going to look at our snippet rolls. Is that what they're called? I think they're called snippet rolls. I'm not sure. But I'm, we made big, long pieces of it, and I showed you how to incorporate some watercolor into them for fun. And now I'm trying to figure out a way to use them up, and I thought this could be a fun way, just cutting them. So I'm going to cut right up this way. And one thing I did notice that we did was we made them all horizontal. We, I didn't make any vertical rolls. So that's something I've got to make. So for an application like this where I need I need a vertical image. So now I know I can also switch the the um, direction I make these snippet rolls in. Okay, so I like to leave just a little bit of a border. I uh, just find it kind of lifts up the um, the roll that we made. It kind of separates it from the background a little bit. You can ink it as well. We may ink this one. I'm not sure. I'm just going to cut off this fragile piece. Put that in my scrap. And then line up another piece down here to finish off the card. You could make this a whole very specific thing if you wanted. But I want to, um, I want to use up these. I thought this was a fun way to do it. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to about here. And I still have all these fun scraps to use. I'm going to line this up. Okay, so I'm going to glue this one down. Pretty sure that's where it's going to go. I'm pretty generous with the glue because all these layers make this paper pretty thick. I'm going to glue that down. Now on the one I added brads in before I glued it down. I'll show you really quick here. Put brads through the, just to kind of give it a different look. So there's that. You can do things like that. You can sew around the edges if you wanted before you stuck it down to the card. And you're only limited by your imagination, right? Rotate this and cut the bottom off. And then we'll put the message on. I think I'm going to use my uh, tacky glue here. Just because this paper is a little bit thicker. I want to make sure it does stick really well. Get my fingers dirty here. And you can make a whack load of these and have them ready to go when somebody's birthday rolls around or Mother's Day and so on and so forth. Christmas ones, ooh, that could be fun. Do these at Christmas. We've been practicing our pine trees lately, so we could um, 
make it like a pine sketch on these and sew them all together. Oh, see, when I start creating, then um, my brain goes off the rails. <laughs> it just keeps going and going. So that's the front of the card there. So then we can put the message on. So I think I'll do a, um, like a thinking of you maybe. So I, again, I just printed different fonts and different sizes. Let me just kind of put them close to the card and see what, see what I like. Maybe we'll just do a happy birthday. What should we do? What should we do? Let's do happy birthday. Because it's nice to have a bunch of those in your repertoire, ready to go. And I'll show you how I make the envelope as well. So I just cut around the word with a little bit of a white border. And that cost me nothing. That was like 30 cents to print, I think. And you read it again. Maybe you have stamps you want to use up. Or maybe you just have a blank page and you stamp it. Or use watercolor paper. Again, it just keeps going and going. There's no wrong or right here. It's just using up and creating this different design card I thought was really fun. So I might just put the message right in the middle. So you can play with the... Uh, the design you want to do um, on the card itself. Maybe just leave this open so they can see it and put happy birthday at the bottom. You could um, glue ribbons and things on here. That could be fun. So I think I'm going to put it crooked in the middle here. But I think I'm going to eliminate a little bit more of this white border. It's a little bit too distracting for me. It's taken away from the background a little bit. So I'm just going to eliminate a little bit of that white. So you could do that with ink as well. Just tone it down a little. And you can use anything here. Wrapping paper, uh, napkins, whatever you have. Kind of like that. Just in the middle, just like that. Just a simple message. Happy birthday. That works. Or do I see? I I start thinking I'm going to put things on an angle, and then my OCD takes over, and I I think, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll straighten it. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of more fun when it's on an angle. It's a little less serious. All right, get over it, Michelle. You're putting it on an angle. So happy. Sorry about the shadow. I only have the one directional light. But I'm sure you guys are used to that by now. And birthday. There. Cute. And again, you can keep embellishing. I, on this one, I glued little uh, charms down, little reflective things down. So you can embellish however you like. Um, let's find the backing now. So here's the backing. So I need to attach the backing so the card sits up. So first I'm going to wrap the backing to keep the whole card consistent. So we'll find a piece of paper here. I try to find something that has, now this card is white so I could have left it, but I try to find something where there's room to write something in, like a birthday message, or something kind of blank, where you can put a sticker over top or something so you have room to write your birthday message, or whatever message you're sending. But you do have to have some somewhere to write the something on, so they know who the card's from, etc. Okay, so I'm just gonna chop this. And I'll fill in any spots that are missing. Okay, get that out of the way. So you just want a heavy duty card stock for the card itself so you have a good foundation to build on and in my case i had this carson like i said this carson drawing board i have quite a bit of it actually and these are just scraps i had cut down from a painting i did but there's also uh the back of your sketchbooks and watercolor books like i showed you earlier that have the um and they're just they're solid so they have a nice foundation this one's a bit soft but they weren't great. So that's where I'd write the message. Now I could put a sticker here. 
but I think I can write over that where it's still legible. And now I have to attach it. So for me, I'd like to use just this uh, duct tape, this white duct tape. And then I just take a piece of paper and kind of glue over it to hide it. But this is strong, nice and strong. So I just chop a piece. I make sure that my cards are lined up from the bottom up. And then I just stick it on. So this you could cover with a big label. Do I have any labels handy? Because that would be a good a clear shipping ladle. I don't know if I'll use that. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, I do. Look, I have large, I, I always get my stuff secondhand. I have these large labels that run in the printer. So let's just simply cut a piece of this down because it's already sticky. And then it's really blank. So you can really write a message then. I should probably put this in my paper cutter. it up. Try and get it straight, which it's not. So here's just a piece of label. And like I said, I get mine at the thrift shops because they're quite expensive labels. And then I will just cover up the tape with a place to put the message. I'm just going to put that in there like that and then roll it down. So now I have a place to write a nice message as well. So now I've attached the, the stand, but what I have to do is stop the stand from flying right back. So you could put another piece of tape. It's a bit tricky. So what I like to do is I take a piece of scrap and this one's pretty thick, but if it was a thinner scrap like this, I would fold it over and um, make it a little bit more sturdy, but this one's pretty good. So I'm just going to square it off doesn't matter how wide it is as long as it's not wider than the card and I'm gonna fold one side and I'm gonna glue that so what I'm essentially doing is determining how upright I want the card to sit so if I glue it where it's wide like this the card will lean further back so I just kind of eyeball it and this is the, the kind of like a safety strap, is so to speak, where the card won't flop right open and fall down. So this gets glued on with a little bit more stronger glue than your standard glue stick, just because this is the part, this is the weakest part of the card. And this is what's gonna take all the strain of the card opening and closing. So you do want a good glue on there. You want a good, a good adhesion. And then I'll put it here. And then I'll put it here. I'm trying to do that on camera without pulling it apart. So that's where you'd glue it like that. And then I'm just going to let that dry for a second. And then I'll fold in here, closed, and lay the card flat while I find something to make my envelope with. Now I had this big envelope um, that I had cut down for other projects and other envelopes. So I like to recycle these into smaller envelopes. Let's see if I can bend this now without disrupting the glue. So I just pinch it in and I squeeze it closed so that it's folded inside the card. And now I have my card that will sit upright. So you can't really see it <laughs> because again, the camera's mounted above you, above the card, but now you can see kind of how the card will sit. Okay, so next, is building the envelope. So I take advantage of this side being closed already and I'll put my card in there and anything else that I might be sending, I'll put it all together so that I make the envelope big enough and I kind of feel around where the card is and then I might even fold it a little bit just to kind of give me a visual indication of how big the card sits in this envelope and then I will cut a generous amount around it for any error. And then I'll turn it into an envelope. So it's got this little funky bit here. I'm gonna just cut away so it's flat. Now I don't have my circle punch, so I don't know what I did with it. It's lost in this chaos I call creative space. <laughs> 
but I would probably put a, whole, a circle punch in here just so you had they can see that it's uh, a nice and neat envelope but in my case I'm just going to cut a triangle shape in there I'll show you in a second what I mean so I'm going to cut down that folded line hopefully this fits sometimes I make these wrong and I have to start again this corner and then I'm just going to double check it because that's where you usually go wrong. I usually make them too small. So I want to make sure that this has plenty of room to fold. So I'm just going to double check here. Okay. So this I'm going to eliminate. See the line's not very straight so it's kind of hard to read where to cut. And then I'm going to cut this corner here. Now I don't like the seam wrapped on the outside on the side so I like to glue it on the inside. So we'll make sure I got that seam right. This will go up and glue like a money pocket kind of thing, like one of those money envelopes and then this will fold down so this can go and then I can just try to mimic this other side here I think I got too much of an angle so I'm just gonna angle this side a little bit there so I can see that I cut too short on the side here let's see but I think it will still do there's all kinds of envelope makers and stencils and things, but I like to try and make my own. Oh, I think the card drops down low enough for safe. I think. <laughs> Boy, I really cut that one crooked for some reason. Well, this was a lot easier when I was doing it off camera. That's for sure. make sure that there's no hole at the bottom. I think it will work. I could almost put tape around there. It's not a very nice envelope, is it? Maybe we'll start again. I have more scrap. I have a big enough scrap. <laughs> Joys of crafting. Okay, let's try this one. So I'm just going to cut up the side. Let's see if I can make my life a little bit easier. I think there's enough to make a lid. Let's try that. All right. So I'm going to cut an angle here. And lay it flat and cut an angle here. This time I'm going to go a little wider on my angles. I don't cut the corners off. And then what I'll do is I see the line on this one, so I'm just going to cut this one. Put it in. And of course, you can decorate these envelopes. That's much better. Alrighty. Okay, we are in business. this. See where the crease is. It was a lot easier the first time I made this. I don't know why I'm struggling so much. <laughs> I got the camera rolling. Maybe that's why. I'll just glue that down. And then I gotta figure out where I want them to be, which will be here. And I like to either hole punch there or just kind of give it a, a little bit of a V so they can see and grab what's in it a little easier. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if I did it right this time. <laughs> I 
Oh, I think we did it. We did it. This is a bit messy, though, for some reason. I went on an angle there. Let's see if I can clean that fold up a bit. It's a bit neater. There. I think we got it. Now we have an, ooh, an ugly envelope on the other side, but that's okay because we can decorate that. So that's how I make my envelopes. Usually they're a little neater than that, but I guess because this is the first one I did, it turned out much better. Still not the neatest envelope in the world, but I haven't decorated it yet. And um, But it's such a fun, personal gift to receive in the mail. Something like this. And something unique. At least I think so. So I hope you like that. I hope it gave you some ideas. A great way to use up your scraps. A great way to use up those um, snippet rolls we did. I think that's what they're called. Jeez Louise, I can't remember. Um, a great way to make a personalized card that stands unique. And you'll have to look at the thumbnail to show how they stand. Because again, I don't have editing software. And I can't put them up like that to show you. But they all have these little dividers here and they just make such fun little cards. I hope I was in frame. Jeez. I'm lately I've been going out of frame a lot. So there you go guys. I hope it gives you some inspiration, some ideas. Uh, please hit the subscribe button and like button. It really helps my channel. And if you feel like supporting the channel further, head on over to my Etsy and have a look. See if there's anything that inspires you there. All right guys. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.